Hello, this is a calculus video, uh, integral calculus, and this, uh, the next four videos are going to be on something called partial fractions. This is, uh, again, a neat nifty trick uh, to take a difficult um, integral, or integrand, I should say, and to integrate it by uh, breaking it down into uh, a series of fractions. This particular video is going to deal with the first case in which the numerator is larger than the denominator. Let, let's, let me go forward here and kind of give you a sense of when you do this nifty trick. So sometimes we can integrate a rational function. What's a rational function? Well, it's a ratio of polynomials. So you've got something in the top and you've got something in the bottom. Uh, and they're in polynomial form. So x to some power, for example. Um, you have a ratio of polynomials. Um, and this is a trick it's not a trick. It's, it, it works. It's real. But how do you integrate a rational function by converting it into a sum of simpler fractions? The key word there being simpler. Uh, and so this is this section um, in uh, James Stewart's sixth edition. Uh, in the sixth edition it's um, of James Stewart's calculus, it's 84A. I believe this is also in chapter six of essential calculus. Um, the title of this section is Integration of Rational Functions by Partial Fractions. All right. Uh, well, that, just ignore the man behind the curtain there. I'll get to that in a second. I used a new function in PowerPoint. I'm very excited. I've never used PowerPoint to do this before. But anyway, never mind that. So let's say we're given this, this problem, and this is one of the examples uh, in uh, the textbook. Uh, so here we have a situation where we have two polynomials. Um, so here's x to the first power. Here's x to the third power. And so we've got a, a rational function, this divided by this. It's a rational function. Um, and we want to take the integral of it. Well, how would we do that? Well, because the numerator is a higher power than the bottom, uh, it's not God, it's a higher power, but not that kind of higher power. So it's this is to the third power, and this is the first. So the way we're going to do it, and, and I don't know how to do it other than long division. Um, so again, I don't know, You maybe you've learned a better way to divide. <laughs> I'm sure there's a better way to do it. The textbook doesn't even show you, it just gives the answer. But I'm going to show you how I do it because I'm old and this is the way I know how to divide a polynomial by a polynomial. So this is the top, that's what we're uh, dividing into, and this is what we're dividing by, uh, x minus 1. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, uh, how many times does x go into x cubed? Well, it goes in x squared. Oh, there's the rest of it. Now it makes sense. Uh, obviously, this is hand-drawn because I didn't know how to make this symbol in, 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 uh, in insert equation. Anyway, so x minus 1 into that. So it goes in x squared. So x squared times x is x to the third. Okay, great. That's going to cancel out. And x squared times minus 1 is going to be negative x squared. Notice that I've spaced it out. So here I've got a 0 x squared, uh, 3, 2, 1, right? x to the third, a 0 times x squared, and uh, 1 times x to the first. Sp spaced it out so that when I multiply x squared, and remember, how many times does x go into x cubed? It goes in x squared times. So x squared times x is x cubed minus x squared. Now, I'm going to subtract. Now, when I subtract, this minus this, the signs all switch. That can be confusing, and I've gotten some problems wrong in the past by not taking this into account. So this becomes a minus, and this becomes a plus, and so this cancels out, and we're left with a positive x squared, and then this minus 0 is, is this. So we have gotten through step 1. Now, I've got my first, the first of the things that I can, I've broken it down into partial fractions, right? We're breaking this down into partial fractions. So this equals the integral of this and now we've got to do the rest, okay? But I can integrate x squared. I know how to do that, believe it or not, even me. Um, so let's keep going. So here's where we left off. We've got, um, this is this was the remainder, remember? This was at the bottom, uh, x squared plus x. That's what we were left with. Um, we have an x squared, and then we're going to divide this into the next bit. So how many times does x go into x squared? Well, it goes in x times. So x times x is x squared, and then x times minus 1 is minus x. Uh, when I subtract this, this becomes a minus, this becomes a plus. So whoop, that cancels out, and this becomes 2x. Um, so now I've got the second uh, partial fraction, so to speak. Uh, that integral, integrand I started with, by dividing it out, it's x squared plus x, and now I've got to keep going, 2x. Let's go to the next page. 
Um, so uh, x minus 1 into 2x, well, how many times does uh, x go into 2x? Two times. So 2 times x is 2x minus 2. There you've got it. Uh, this becomes a minus, this becomes a plus, and that cancels out, and we're left with 2. Now, I can't go any further, so 2 is the remainder. So here's here it is. Here's how it all breaks down. And by the way, Stuart just says this is what it is, and you might have thought, well, where did that come from? I've just shown you where that came from. x squared plus x plus 2 with a remainder of 2 over x minus 1. All right? So we've done it. We've broken this down into partial fractions. So now let me go back to the nice type. So there's what the problem we started with, which equals what we just came up with. And there's a dx here, but I didn't want to put it. So you pure pure mathists are going to be upset with me, but I understand there's an invisible dx there. I just put it in invisible ink. Um, all right. So now this is, I can integrate this, right? But the integral of x squared is x cubed over three. And the integral of x is x squared over two. And the integral of two is two x, right? So that equals blah, blah. So this is that, and this is that, and that's that. And of course, there's a C over here. I'm sorry, you purists against. Stop talking, you, you purist. I hear you bickering out there. Um, so that's that's where I, I got up, I got with. So just one step more and we're done, right? So what is the integral of this? Well, I've got x minus 1 in the basement here. Um, so the integral of that, uh, the integral of 1 over x is the natural log of x, right? So the integral of 1 over x minus 1 is the natural log of x minus 1. And then the 2, of course, stays out front. I could have factored it out anyway, right? So here we have the answer to the problem. Um, the derivative of this monstrosity here, it's not that bad really, uh, ends up being this um, by using partial fractions. And that's how you do it. So um, that is how do you do uh, integration using partial fractions when the numerator when the when the de the degree of the numerator uh, the po the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is larger than that of the denominator. All right, video number one. Three more to come on this particular um, subject: partial fractions.